سلام علیکم و رحمت الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله العلی العظیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا و نبینا ابی القاسم المصطفی محمد و علی آله الطیبین الطاهرین لا سیما بقیت الله فی الارضین عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره. We said that there are different types of people, and when you choose someone as friend, as a brother or sister in faith, you have to examine, you have to test them. Otherwise. You may trust someone and later you will suffer, you will regret. There are some hadiths about different types of friends. In general, we can say there are people who are bad friends. There are people who are good friends but to a limited extent and there are people who are good friends and they are 100% genuine and reliable. So in general, there are three categories. <clears throat> the people that we should not have befriended the people who are good, but you should know that there is a limit for their friendship. Don't expect from them too much and don't put all your trust in them. Don't disclose all your secrets to them. And the third is the real friends, real brothers and sisters that you can trust them 100%. There is a hadith from Amir al-Mu'mini alayhi salam, which is very famous among ulama, and ulama many times refer to this hadith. And both groups which are mentioned in this hadith are not bad. Both of them are good, but some are very good, some are only ordinary people. Al Ikhwanu Sinfan, brothers are two types. إخوان الثقة وإخوان المكاشرة. Brothers of trust, trustworthy brothers. ثقة means trust. The brothers that you can rely on them, you can trust them. وإخوان المكاشرة. And brothers that you smile at each other means they are nice people, but not that reliable. You haven't tested them. You haven't got close to them. Then Imam Ali explains each of these two types. Those who are trustworthy brothers فَهُمُ الْكَفُّ وَالْجِنَاهُ وَالْأَهْلُ وَالْمَالُ They are like your hand. They are like your wing. They are like your family. They are like your money. They are totally for you and always at your service. They're concerned about you. They care for you. You can count on them. If someone is your, like your wing, like your hand, like your family, like your own property, your own money, so you can always benefit from. فَهُمُ الْكَفُّ وَالْجِنَاحُ وَالْأَهْلُ وَالْمَالُ فَإِذَا كُنْتَ مِنْ أَخِيكِ 
ala had if you trust your brother to this extent if you have established trustworthiness in this person then don't hesitate to share with him your money serve him with your body sometimes your brother is in need of help you carry for him something or for example you do some office work paperwork for him sometimes you may travel with him or with his family or he's traveling he leaves his family with you don't have hesitation to spend from your money from your property from your time your energy for such brothers and also who is good with him nice with him kind to him you also should be the same with him but if someone is harming him is showing enmity to him try not to be nice to them not to be kind to them not to support them because you know that this is a honest and nice person so those who are his enemies for sure they have bad reasons for enmity don't be with them vectum if you know of any of his secrets hide it and keep it if he has something that he doesn't want people know something about his family about his background there are many things that maybe people don't want to become a public knowledge it's not a matter of crime it's not a matter of doing some bad things in secret no it's a matter of personal private confidential things if you know secrets of your brothers and sisters if someone for example has a family issue has come to talk to discuss to consult you you cannot say this to other people and also aibahu also if he has some faults some flaws some problems that you know you keep it for yourself the same way that you do for your children if your child has a problem you don't go to the street or to the mosque or to the university and say people my child has this problem you try to keep it hidden and you try to help him to get rid of that problem of course this is different from someone who is doing a crime and you know ask you to support him by you know keeping his secrets or for example if someone is a bad person and who wants to marry and then the other party asks you you don't say you know anything and you say this is a good person no this is not about that we are talking about trustworthy people honest people good people these people don't don't have any crimes in the record it's just private personal problems and some faults that every human being may have because we are not infallible and try to spread among people his good qualities so that people respect him more if you know something good about this person you try to say people if you know something bad you try to keep it for yourself so if every moment does this with respect to other mu'mineen, then everyone has respect everyone has, has honor everyone is dignified but if na'uzu billah 
as soon as we know secrets of people, we disclose. As soon as we know their problems, we tell to everyone. And we backbite, we accuse, then no respect would remain. Today you do something with someone, another day someone else does this to you. No one in the end would remain safe. Then Amir al salam said, These people, the first group, trustworthy brothers, they are they are less in number, less available than red sulfur. Red sulfur, kibrit al-ahmar, is an expression which is used for something which is very rare and therefore it's very valuable. If something is available everywhere, the value goes down. al kibrit al-ahmar, red sulfur, means something which is very valuable because very rare. It's not easy to find such people that are really trustworthy and they are like your hand, they are like your wing they are like your family they are like your property the second group of the brothers those that you just smile at each other you enjoy being with them you don't feel lonely when you are with them it's good. You smile at each other. Sometimes you mention a story. Sometimes you say jokes together. You drink a cup of tea together. But just to this extent, don't bring them to your family life. Don't bring them to your confidential life. Be careful. These are friends just to limited extent. فَإِنَّكَ تُصِيبُ لَذَّتَكَ مِنْهُمْ you gain some pleasure, you enjoy being with them. In the same way that you enjoy their company, do not deprive them from yourself. They smile at you, you also smile at them. They offer you tea and coffee, you offer tea and coffee. Try to be nice with them as they are nice with you. But don't go beyond. Don't try to find out more about their personal story, personal life. Because then you will be disappointed. Amir al he says, in the same way that they speak nicely to you, they use nice language, you do the same. When they meet you, they meet you with happy face, you meet them with a happy face. They smile, you smile. This is good. In society, in our workplace, in university, in college, with our neighbors, we should be respectful we should be kind to each other smile at each other sometimes maybe we drink a cup of tea or i don't know maybe we share a story how is weather today it's nice you know how are your family for example something to establish a good relation but don't make it further don't start, you know, saying your secrets to them. Don't start bringing them to your family life and then suffer. So, in this hadith, Amir al distinguishes between two types of relation between friends. Relationship of friends who are 100% reliable and trustworthy. You treat them as member of your family and with the people who are just very formally and very uh, limited in their friendship with you.
in another hadith Imam Sadiq alayhi salam refers to three groups of friends or brothers as I told you in general we can say there are three bad friends and then good friends and very good friends because those who are not bad they themselves can be too as we said some are very very good some are just formal friends Imam Sadiq alayhi salam here refers to all the three categories and the focus of Imam Sadiq in this hadith is on a very important quality inshallah in other nights I will mention good qualities that people should have so that you choose them as your real friends as your close and intimate friend inshallah we'll talk about those qualities but the quality that Imam Sadiq focuses on in this hadith is aql, intellect, rationality. One of the most important quality in every person is to be a rational and wise person. Alhamdulillah, in the teachings of Islam, especially in the school of Ahlul Bayt, we have very rich literature on aql, on intellect. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Al ikhwanu thalatha. Brothers, friends are three. Means they are one of the three. فَوَاحِدٌ كَالْغَضَاءِ الَّذِي يُحْتَاجُ إِلَيْهِ كُلَّ وَقْتِ Some friends are like food. You need all the time. We always need food. Some friends like food, you cannot survive without them. You need them all the time. Who are these friends that we need them all the time like food? The friend, the brother who is aqil, who is rational, who thinks and then speaks, who thinks and then he plans, who thinks and then gives you advice. Rational. The second group of friends are like disease, are like illness. So we should avoid them. So one type of friend is like food, we need them all the time. One type of friend is like disease, like illness, we should avoid them. Who are those who are like disease? the one who is stupid the one who doesn't understand doesn't think properly gives you bad advice puts you into trouble a very important quality for a friend is to be intelligent so we have so far two groups we said there are three first the one who is like food we need every day that is intelligent rational person the one who is like disease we should avoid that is the one who is fool who is stupid and there is a third group he is like medicine not even like food medicine medicine is more important than food food is something we need every day and it's available everywhere but sometimes you need treatment there are brothers who are like medicine who are these brothers 
فَهُوَالَّبِيبِ Those who are wise. Intelligent is the person who thinks, who acts, who plans according to rationality. But wisdom, hikmah, is more. Wisdom is a very rare quality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يُعْتَ الْحِكْمَةِ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا The one who has been given wisdom has been given a lot, good in abundance. Allah says, لَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ We have given Luqman wisdom. Alhamdulillah, here in this place we had a few years ago a course on wisdom. We had eight lectures on wisdom here. What is the meaning of hikmah? Who is hakim? Who is wise person? A wise person is the one that in addition to knowledge, in addition to having lots of experiences, in addition to knowing the problems and the solutions, he always find the shortcuts, the shortest and the fastest routes to success. If you consult a wise person, he doesn't tell you what is good. He tells you what is the best. This is Hakim. We very much need wisdom especially those who are leaders they need wisdom and may Allah inshallah give all of us wisdom so Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says the third group of brothers who are like medicine are those who are labib people of thought wise people ulul albab they don't do anything out of anger or out of excitement. If they do something, if they say something, if they plan for something, if they meet people, it's all because they have carefully examined this and rationally come to this conclusion that this is the best action. Imagine if you have one or two of friends who are like this. Even if you have one friend like this, it can solve your problem. You have a problem at home, you go to such friend, he gives you the best advice. You have a problem in community, you go to such person, gives you the best advice. This is like medicine. So we have, according to this hadith from Imam Sadiq salam, three groups of brothers. One is like food, we need all the life every day and these are rational people intelligent people those who are like disease and these are the brothers or friends who are full they don't understand and those who are like medicine are those who are wise another hadith is Again, dividing brothers into three. Al Ikhwanu Thalatha. Mowasin Benafse. The best are those who give to you, share with you their soul, their life, themselves. Everything that they have, they make it available to you. You know, in Islam, we have this beautiful concept of muvasat. Muvasat is different from musawat. Musawat means equality. Muvasat means to share what you have with other people. If I have something, and it's not extra. I have just enough for myself. Still, when I see you don't have, I should share. We use it together. 
This is a very beautiful concept. It's more than charity. Because charity can be giving extra that you have. You have some extra money, some extra dress, some extra food. You should give. But Islam says you should also have muvasat. And that is when you don't have extra, okay, share what you have. You are not going to die if you reduce your food. You just have enough, but reduce it. You can give few bites to another person or give some of your water to another person. This is muvasat. And then we have even higher level. What is higher than muvasat? Ithar. Ithar is to give preference to others. As Allah says about Ahlul Bayt. يُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَسَاسَةٌ They fed miskin, yatim, asir, not by giving them extra, no. Not even by sharing half of what they had with them, no. Ithar, they only had little, they gave that little to the needy people, to the orphan, to the captive. This is Ithar. So in Islam, we have different ranks. Infaq, like charity, Muvasat, and then Ithar. Mu'minin, brothers and sisters in faith, should be at least in the middle, and that is the level of Muvasat, not level of just Infaq, giving extra. No, muvasat, sharing. So, hadith says, some brothers, they do muvasat, they share with you. But not only money or time. Benafsihi. He shares with you his soul, his life, his self. It means that everything. He makes himself available for you. This is very good quality. There is a second group of brothers that Movasan Bemalehi. He shares with you his money, but not more than money. Just money. It's not that everything he shares with you. No, just his money. Okay, alhamdulillah, at least he shares his money with you. And of course, you share your money with him. But there are third groups of, group of people. There's a third group of people. And this is the group that they want to just gain from you. وَآخَرُ يَأْخُذُ مِنْكَ they don't share with you everything they don't share with you their money they just want to take from you he wants just to enjoy from you he wants to gain pleasure from you don't consider him as a trustworthy person don't become too close to him either he should be a person who is at least a reliable person who is able to share with you and to have some sympathy with you or if possible to be a person who is so high that makes everything that he has available for you so what I try to say today with the help of these beautiful hadith was to say that people are different. Brothers and sisters, friends are different. There are different levels of friendship that you can have with different people. 
And you have to learn, you should be skillful to understand who is the one that I can 100% trust. And he can be like my own family member, like my own eye, my own hand. And then treat him like that. Who is the one that is good? But I shouldn't expect from him too much and I shouldn't put too much trust in him. Just be careful, be nice with each other, smile at each other, but not treat him as a family member. Not to tell him all my secrets, all my problems. And then there is another group that you have to be careful not to put any trust, not only hundred percent even if not put 50 percent trust in them just always watch them and be careful about them so there are different groups of people inshallah in coming nights we will talk about the people who are good friends there are different groups that ahlul bayt salam, have recommended to choose them as our friends as our brothers and sisters and then we will talk about the people that we are warned about them. We should be careful not to become their friends. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Dar edameh bahs baradari wa dusti be in mas'ale ishare kardim که دوست ها به اصطلاح برادرها چند دستن اگر یک دستبندی کلی بخوایم بکنیم خیلی عام میتونیم به سه دسته تقسیم بکنیم انسان ها رو کسانی که اهلیت اصلا دوستی رو ندارن اصلا اسم برادر رو رو اینها نباید بگذاریم اینها فقط دنبال منفعت خودشون هستن خیری به ما نمی رسونن دسته دوم انسان هایی هستن که قصد بدی ندارن آدم های بدی نیستن ولی آدم های خاص و ویژه هم نیستن و حساب خاصی هم برای ما باز نکردن با هم میگیم میخندیم تو اداره تو محیط کار تو دانشگاه گاهی صحبت میکنیم گاهی یه چایی ممکنه با هم بخوریم دو قدم راه ممکنه با هم بریم تا ایسکا ولی اینها رو نمیشه به عنوان دوست و برادر حساب کرد ولی ضرری هم نمیزنن اگر انسان حواسش باشه این مقدار از رابطه خوبه دسته سوم کسانی هستن که اهل سقه قابل اعتماد هستند اینها رو ارزیابی کردیم امتحان کردیم به صداقتشون رسیدیم و واقف شدیم اینها رو اگر داشتیم و پیدا کردیم دیگه نسبت به اینها از بزل محبت و مال و خدمات مزایقه نکنیم چون اینها هم نمی کنند. هر کاری میتونیم برای همدیگه این دسته از افراد انجام بدیم از جمله روایت هایی که خوندم یک روایت از امیر المؤمنین علیه السلام بود که ارز کردم این روایتی است که در میان علما معروفه که حضرت برادرانی رو که میشه به عنوان دوست انتخاب کرد اون دو دسته که مثبتن مدا خودشون با هم اختلاف دارند رو توضیح میدن میفرمان برادران دو دستند اخوان و ثقه و اخوان و مکاشره برادران مورد وسوق و اعتماد و برادرانی که فقط به همدیگه لبخند میزنید برادران مورد وسوق و اعتماد مثل دست شما کف دست انسان انسان با دستش چیزی را بخواد بلند کنه بخواد دفاع کنه از خودش 
از آسیب بخواد حفظ کنه خودش را همش با دست این برادرها مثل دست انسانن مثل بال انسانن مثل بازوی ما هستن مثل اهل ما هستن انقدر این برادر یا این خواهر سمیمی است از برادر تنی به آدم سمیمی تره از خواهر انسان به انسان سمیمی تره برادرها برای برادرها خواهرها برای خواهرها این شخص هر چقدر میتونید باهاش نزدیک باشید امیر المومنی میفرماد مالت را در اختیارش بذار اگر جسمت را باید به زحمت مندازی برای راحتی او کاری براش انجام بدی سفری بری چیزی ببری انجام بده این جور انسان ها ارزش همه جور کار دارن اصلا مثل خودتن مثل خانواده خودتن اگر کسی با او صافه باهاش صاف باش اگر کسی با او دشمنی میکنه تو هم باهاش بد باش چون چنین آدمی نمیشه کسی بی خود باش دشمنی کنه لابد اون کسی که دشمنی میکنه عیبی داره مشکلی داره قرضی داره سرش را پنهان نگهدار اگر متوجه شدی مشکلی دارد عیبی دارد عیبش را آشکار نکن و خوبیش رو منتشر کن در میان مردم تعریف کن ازش هرچی مؤمن در جامع عزیز باشه شما عزیز میشید مثل اینکه انسان وقتی بچهش برادرش پدرش اموش وقتی تو جامع عزیز باشه شما احساس عزت میکنید افتخار میکنید خب مؤمنین هم همینطوره هرچی مؤمنین عزیز باشن مایه عزت ماست بعد حضرت میفهمان البته اینها از کبریت احمر کمترن یعنی خیلی نادرن این افرادی که صد در صد میشه بهشون اعتماد کرد دسته دوم برادران مکاشره است یعنی برادرانی که با هم میخندید یه لبخندی به هم میزنید یه سلام علیکی میکنید یه چند دقیقه ممکنه با هم یه صحبتی میکنید حضرت میفرماند که به هر حال اینا شما را از تنهایی در میارن بلاخره همین خوبه دیگه یه جادم کار میکنه یا همسایش یه سلام علیکی میکنه یه دو دقیقه با هم صحبت بکنیم خوبه شما هم سعی کن مزایقه نکنی از این لبخند و محبت و احترام اما اینکه حالا او رو بیاری داخل خانواده بکنی انوالتو بهش بسپاری یا اسرارتو بهش بگی نه مراقب باش زود نزدیک نشید و افراد به خصوص جوون ها و نوجوون ها باید مراقب باشن فوری با کسی رفیق جونجونی نشه آدم زود گول زبان چرب و نرم افراد رو نخواد حتی گاهی ما بزرگ سال هم سرمون کلا میره انسان باید مهارت داشته باشه نه خیلی شکاک باشه که در روایت داره که خیلی تفتیش نکن چون دیگه وقت دوست نمیتونی پیدا کنی لا توفتش ناس فتبقا بلا صدیق خیلی مته به خشخاش بذاری تنها میشی هیچ که نمیتونی پیدا کن اما زود باورم نباش هر کسی که احترام کرد و دست خم... گذاشت و سینش و خم شد فکر کنی آدم خوبیه باید انسان مراقب باشه پس این دسته دوم هم امیر المومن میفرماد که شما از مصاحبت اینها یه لذتی میبری یه لبخندی میزنی اونا میزنن این حد را حفظ کن قهر نکن رابطه را قطع نکن اما در همین حد خودش نگه دار در یه روایتی از امام صادق علیه السلام خوندم که حضرت به هر سه گروه اشاره میکنن یعنی کسانی که اصلا نباید دوستی داشته باشیم کسانی که دوستی متوسط باشون میتونیم داشته باشیم و کسانی که دوستی اعلا هر سه دسته رو اشاره میکنن و بر اساس کیفیت عقل اونها و خردمندی اونها این سه گروه را تقسیم بندی میکنن فرمودن دوستان و برادران سه جورن الاخوان و ثلاثه بعضی از دوستها مثل قضا هن. یعنی چی مثل قضا یعنی شما به اینها هر روز نیاز داری همیشه باید با اینها باشی قضا برای سلامت جسم لازمه دوست خوب 
برای سلامت روانی و روحی لازمه پس یه دسته برادرها مثل قضا هن. همیشه نیاز داریم یه دسته برادرها مثل مرض هن. بیماری هن. باید مراقب باشی از اینا فاصله بگیرید میگه برادر سلام ولی مواظب باش این برادر سلام معلوم نیست پشتش چیه باید مواظب باش اینا انسان هایی هستن که امام صادق میفرمان احمقن نادانن ابلهن به حرفشون گوش میدی سرت به سنگ میخوره پیشنهاد بد میکنن شکست میخوری آدم با عقل و خرد و تدبیر و تجربه نیستن دسته سوم مثل دوا هند قضا هم بالاتر اون دسته اول مثل قضا بودن دسته سوم مثل دوا هند یعنی چی؟ یعنی اینا حلال مشکلات هن. یعنی نه تنها در شرایط عادی به درد میخورن وقتی گیر میکنه انسان دوچار مشکل میشه اینها به انسان کمک میکنن اینا کی هن؟ اینا لبیب هن. انسان های خردمند و حکیم بهترین نصیحت ها بهترین راهنمایی ها بهترین پیشنهاد ها رو به انسان میدن آدم از مشورت اینها صحبت با اینها هیچ وقت ضرر نمیکنه انسان هایی که به اعصاب مسلطن فوری هیجانی نمیشه تا یه چیزی براش تعریف میکنیم فوری هیجانی میشه گره برو بزن بکش نه میگه بابا سب کن بینم چیه گوش میده به حرفت بعد میگه آقا تو اینجا رو تو اشتباه کردی اینجا رو باید اینجوری کنی راه حل درست بد میده بعضی ها فقط کارش اینه که مشکلات آدم رو بیشتر میکنن پس سه رقم دوست داریم طبق این روایت اونی که عاقل است این مثل غذاست اونی که احمق است این بیماری و مرزه اونی که حکیم و لبیبه که این مثل دواه اینا کمن ولی به حال آدم یکی دو تا اینجوری هم داشته باشه مشکلاتشو حل میکنه امیدواریم که انشالله خداوند متعال ما را در دنیا و آخرت هم صحبت ابرار و نیکان قرار بده انشالله خود ما هم بتوانیم برادران و دوستان خوبی برای دیگران باشیم و همینطور در دیگران هم انشالله صفا و سمیمیت و برادری را بیابیم و صلی الله علی سیدنا محمد و آله طیبین الطاهرین